Boys and Dolls, I am back, I am back, I am back. I took a couple breaks this week. Um, we had to reschedule and push back some things and move some things forward, but we are back, Fashion Dolls. Our very special guest today was a double for Billy Ocean and Morgan Freeman. And at age 65 years old, he is still going, still furthering, still progressing, still doing his thing out here. Joining me today, ladies and gentlemen, from the UK, we have Mr. Lloyd Collins. And he's here, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest, Mr. Lloyd Collins. Hello, good evening. Good evening, good afternoon, all of that and so much more. Welcome to the Dawn Times. Uh, over here, just give me a moment. I'm going to go somewhere with a small light. Stand by one. Time. As you join Fashion Dolls, make sure you guys share so the live so that we can get this show rolling and going. I'm sorry you're saying. Is that best yet? Perfect. Perfect. Let, let me plug you in so that uh, you don't run out of battery halfway through. Hold on. One more moment. Hey, welcome, welcome, Fashion Dolls. Welcome to the dollhouse if you're just coming in. We are back. Um, we took a break a couple of days and we're back. And hopefully, we're going to be picking back up here. All right, how's that? Can you see me? I can see you. Things have fallen apart here. My apologies. Oh, take your time. Be good. Okay. All and right. Who am I looking? Great, great. It's great to see you. It's so great to have you here in the dollhouse. So before we get into this interview, how has your 2022 been thus far? Because I know it's been challenging with everything that's going on. And currently you're in the UK right now. So how has everything yes. been for you thus far? Uh, yeah, I'm back in the UK. We've just come back from a short trip to uh, Romania. Um, but no, back in the UK, less than 24 hours, feeling quite tired, but uh, back home. Okay, uh, okay. So, so far, 2022 has been interesting. Not as much work as I'd like, but um, there's been some projects um, in the pipeline. Yes, it, it's been challenging for, for all of us to get through this. Like, we never expected this to happen. And this is the new normal for people that are watching. So, yeah. It, it's become new. Yes. And get off life, you know? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. So, let's get right into this interview. You have been in the acting game for a very, very long time. Tell us how you got your start into the acting world because you doubled for Billy Ocean and the one and only Morgan Freeman, which we'll get into through this interview. So tell us, how did you get your start into acting? Or did you always knew this would be a passion that you want to achieve? No, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I stumbled into thrown off on set and um, because I have dreadlocks I used to work security on film set including uh, John Depp the Pirates of the Caribbean and I used to have lots of arguments with the um, costume people the ADs that they get on set and I'm security because of my dreadlocks which is, are hidden at the moment yeah? um, and I had a on saying, Listen, it didn't really bother too much. But then I was working security on, um, I think it was 
one of the Batman films that uh, Morgan Freeman was involved with. And first I turned up on set in my role as security, people started mistaking me for Mr. Freeman. So after a relatively short period of time, I stopped being Lloyd. It was, hello, Morgan, hello, Mr. Freeman, and this kind of stuff. Anyway, I was on set for maybe a month or so, and the big day arrived. There was lots of buzz. Everybody said, Morgan Freeman's coming to set tomorrow. And I, cool. Anyway, he arrived, and there I was standing, maybe 20 yards from where he was. He got out of his car. And he got out of his car, looked in my direction, and I kid you not, he did a double take, kind of um, scratched his forehead and went away. Anyway, like five minutes later, he came back out and he came over to me and he said, hi, he shook me by the hand. And I said, hey, you're the guy who looks like me. <laughs> and that was the first time I met him. Um, as you've already said in the intro, I have since gone on to double for a number of movies. I get jobs where, um, because of my resemblance to him, um, I got a phone call, for example, from a UK um, television program. They did a series called Lookalikes, and the first series went really well. And they were commissioned to do a second series. So I got a phone call saying, would you like to play God in the second series of Lookalikes? And I said, I thought about it for about like five seconds. And, you know, thinking, did they really just ask me that question? And naturally I said, yes. And it kind of went from there, you know? So um, I do... Um, the Freeman lookalike is only a very small part of what I do because I get involved in voiceover, yeah. uh, modeling. I just photo shoots, uh, general promotion. Again, a lot of this or some of it is because of my resemblance. Um, yeah, I'm having fun, enjoying it. And you, you've done Channel 4, lookalikes on Channel 4. You did the lead role in Cobra, and you double for Morgan, of course, and Billy Ocean for Take Me Out. You've appeared <laughs> a long time in the channel for looking like that's you an done. experience. What was you saying? I couldn't hear you. You did. You've done your research. Yes, I have. For this one, I had to make sure I had to come a with my a game on for this one because I could not mess up. What is some of the best advice that he's giving you? Because I know it took him back for a loop. Like, this man looks like me. What advice is Morgan giving you while on set? He hasn't, actually, apart from, you know, we've exchanged a few words, but usually when I'm on set, he's not there, which is why I'm doubling for him. Um, he certainly knows I'm around, and I remind him periodically through his Facebook page, his LinkedIn page, um, and, you know, I ha I'm enjoying a reasonably high profile on social media. So, you know, if he searches Morgan Freeman, I'm afraid, you know, my picture tends to come up as well next to his. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I'm saying to him, look, it's simple. You're over there. I'm over here. You know, there's a few years difference in age. You really don't need to be traveling across the pond with the same kind of frequency when I can stand in for you, you know? You still get paid and uh, everybody's happy. But I'm still waiting for a call from his agent or his manager. Okay. But that's the message. Manifestation, and it, and it will happen. It will happen. If you've doubled for him and Billy Ocean, which we'll talk about, what was it like doubling for music pioneer Billy Ocean and Take Me Out? <laughs> It was kind of dropped on me at very, very short notice. And the scene I did, um, it was fun. I got in trouble with my daughter because uh -oh. <laughs> it involved being in a sauna and um, on a program called Take Me Out, which is uh, when a guy tries to get a date with, and there's like 30 women and they whittle it down, yeah? And my daughter phoned me and sort of said, 
the hell are you doing and take me out? And I said, well, hold on, hold on, calm down, calm down. And then she said, and why the hell were you naked? <laughs> said, Check out the video. I was in a sauna. I had swimming trunks on, yeah? So um, that was kind of fun. It, it was different. Um, I don't do a lot for him other than when people kind of see a resemblance that fits into whatever it is they're doing. They phone me up and say, am I interested? This is how much we're going to pay you. And I say, yeah, sounds good. Or, But no, my, most of my thing revolves around um, uh, Morgan Freeman. In terms of the, the resemblance, but I do loads of other things which are not dependent on him. It's very canny. Do you ever get, I know you get stopped a lot when you go out and people actually think that you're him. What's the strangest encounter that you've had going out? I think the most humbling, it, I was filming, um, I had a part in a, a pop um, series that was running over here for a number of years. And I was filming, I was away filming for four or five days, and this was in a prison. And I remember after the first day I came out and the security said to me, there was a couple here waiting for you, but you know, you missed them like five minutes. And I, strange. And then the second day of filming, same thing. I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? But also, the place I was filming was a place called Shrewsbury. And when I wandered around, if I went into a restaurant or somewhere, I was always get these looks. You know, that kind of, I think I know him. Is it him? Uh -huh. But, and you kind of get attuned to it when somebody's really staring at you. Um, I get this at airports, for example. Anyway, the last day of filming, um, I left and I'd missed them yet again. But I went to get my car and this couple turned up and I they pulled up next to where my car was. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm leaving. You can have a space. And they said, no, um, it's actually you we want to see. And the lady, we're talking about like, they must have been in their seventies. She said, do you mind if I have a photograph with you? And I said, hang on, I'm not who you think I am. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, I still want a photograph. Like, okay, cool. So um, we had a selfie and then her husband took the photograph. And I said, look, do you want to get involved as well? And um, so we had loads of photographs taken and they asked me for my autograph, which I obviously signed Lloyd Collins, you know, AKA Morgan Freeman looks like. Um, and I felt, I don't think I've ever felt more humbled because um, the pleasure um, on their face is the, the, the whole reaction. It was all so genuine. I, Again, I say, I've never felt so humble. Yes, I get lots of people, they, they want to take selfies, they want autographs, but that was, that moment was special. And one to always cherish, to, to go out in the world and, and be recognized as both yourself and then as an, an actor that is so pivotal in the acting and entertainment industry, Lord, he's been doing it for a, a very long time, as well as you. You both are vets in this industry. And speaking of photographs, you've also done some modeling as well, too. But before we get to that, we have a question for you. Um, shout out to my fraternal, Alan Yankee. He wants to know, have you auditioned to be the voice actor on Lion King or anything animated? Um, no. The reason is that I've done a fair bit of... Um, uh, voiceover, but it strikes me that it's one of these really close knit network you mm -hmm. tend to get the same people yeah. um, getting all the work, and it strikes me it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, so I'm still waiting for my big breakthrough in that area. 
So if you have any tips, you have any recommendations, anybody you can put me in touch with, I'm up for it. And it's coming, and we'll have this interview up. So whoever's watching, you never know whose hands it could get into. It's going to happen, Mr. Collins, it, definitely. It, listen, I'm flexible. I'm open to interesting proposals. All right, fashion dolls, y'all spread the word. If you know any directors, producers, tag them in this live, share this live. And this, and this interview will be up on my YouTube channel. The link is in my stories. So you guys head on over to my stories, click that link, and you guys can go and subscribe to the channel as well too. Hi, Jay Evans. Make sure you guys please go and subscribe to Jay Evans' talk show, another great talk show. He sat with some amazing actors, um, people that are in the music industry. So it's definitely a channel that you want to go and check out as well also. And speaking of channels and photographs, you've done some modeling. You did London Fashion Week. You did a Gillette commercial. You did CQ, MSN, Costco. You've done so many brands. But let's talk about London Fashion Week. As you can see from my Instagram, Mr. Collins, I and my stories, I'm a, I'm a fashion girl. I, I live <laughs> my life in fashion. I'm always changing up my look and pushing the envelope. So what was it like for you to get that call to participate in London Fashion Week? Because I have family in New York, and I know New York Fashion Week is very chaotic, but London Fashion Week is on a whole nother level. So tell us about your experience participating in London Fashion Week. It, ultimately, it was a bit disappointing because like, we were all up for this. Uh, the designer was Yoki, oh God, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but he is an incredibly famous um, Japanese designer. And the they shot a short video, which was supposed to be in the backdrop um, for the show. And everybody was really excited. We had a really brilliant a couple of days shooting it. And then unfortunately, the fashion show got canceled because of COVID. So, it was all a little bit, it was a bit of an anticlimax. Everybody was disappointed um, because it didn't happen because of COVID. But I mean, the video's out there. In fact, it was actually submitted to the Cannes uh, Film Festival and it won one of the minor awards. So it was a success. I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Working with the people was absolutely amazing. And at the end of the day, it's another, it's another one on my CV. So yeah, I'm I loved it. It's just a little bit sad about the, um, we didn't really get to showcase it the way it was meant to have happened, you know? Mr. Collins, it, the fashion world has took a, a major, major blow when this pandemic hit. And a lot of designers were affected. So shout outs to, um, I can name a couple, Jay Moore, who's a fabulous designer in the Atlanta area, um, New York area, Harlem, New York area, you've got Jerry Reed, and I interviewed Jerry Reed back in 2021, and this was when the pandemic hit, and he's been doing his collection virtual, like he literally puts on a virtual show, and it's absolutely stunning, um, I don't know how he gets the models to come out and sing, but it's online and people can see it, so a lot of fashion designers have become very, very uh, creative throughout this entire thing. And I, it, it, I mean, it sucks because I would, I would much rather be able to sit in the audience front row and see the show live, like see the person, the models actually move down the runway with the pieces and everything. But seeing it on screen is just a different feeling, you know. But, but thank God for the power of technology. But the fashion world has definitely took a a blow when it came to this pandemic. So it, yeah, for sure. But then. I like to look at the positives, okay? Yeah. Um, utilizing technology, there's nothing that beats actually being there, getting the vibes, mm -hmm. being with real people. Um, but because we're in the pandemic for so long, people have slowly but surely adjusted to a new way of doing things. And, um, you know, showing off your uh, designs online, I mean, 
more and more people buy stuff online these days. It's become the norm. They can't be bothered to go to the shops, right? Um, online retailers, they offer you no quibble. If it doesn't fit, if you don't like it, send it back. No argument, right? So um, also with social media, um, you can get so much stuff out there so quickly and at little or no cost and you know if you're creative you use your imagination it's a whole different world call it progress if you like you know I, i'm old and i still remember um you know going to the cinema and you know like the television you had three channels now you have 300 or whatever the hell it is right you know um you can order something at nine o'clock in the morning and it's a good possibility it will, it will be delivered the same day, if not first thing the following morning. Why the hell do you need to go shopping? Now, I'm, I'm not a shopkeeper, so <laughs> um, if I was, I'd be taking a different view. So, yes, I hear what you're saying. Um, but then I think my attitude is, look, this is what it is, right? Yeah. Let's brace it. Let's get the benefits and dare I said I can probably see a lot more benefits than downsides at the moment maybe I shouldn't be saying that but it's a reality you know absolutely I, I agree 100% I concur with that and let me see we have another question for you also who um, comes to my Alan Yankee um, he wants to know do you have an audio view I can listen to you all day. Yeah, your voice is soothing. Have you been told that um, you should do audio? Because Morgan has done it. I know. This is so frustrating. Because, like, everybody keeps telling me this. And I'm saying, okay, I want to do it. You know, give me a job. Pay me to do it. Right? I'm up there. In fact, you know, I'm not asking for silly money. It's just give me a break. Yeah? And, um... I keep plugging away, right? So, but I'm, I'm, I'm forever the optimist. Somebody somewhere, hopefully one of these days will say, hey, listen, you know, you've got the ideal voice, right? I want you to do audio books, you know, a voiceover, whatever it is. I don't do accents, right? So, you know, I can't pretend to be six different characters, but in terms of standard stuff, voiceovers, audiobooks, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not for that. And, you know, and the other thing is, you know, again, I'm flexible. I'm prepared to travel. Um, I don't say no outright. I always look at and talk, um, look at the project and make an assessment. And if it works for all parties, I'm up for it, you know. So I'm not, I'm not some prima donna. You know, I can't do this. I won't do that. No, 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 that's not me, you know. And you're open to doing it all. And, and in, in, in the acting industry, um, you have to be open to doing voiceovers and animation. And I, I can so see that in the future because your voice is very soothing. And I know you get that a lot. And you're also a grandfather. You're a husband. You do it all. And I'm pretty sure you've been you've having to read stories to the grandbabies and things like that and people want to hear this on audio um i think matthew mcconaughey did it as well too he um signed a deal to read bedtime stories to the kids or something to that extent and morgan also has done it as well too um and samuel jackson is another one so your voice is your power how does he, a key. Yeah. How, does he how does samuel get away with the mf <laughs> I, I would like to know that he he probably have to censor that out because he does use that a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they they they, they obviously you. edit that out or you get the bleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, um no, it is something I really really love to do, you know. And it's not just I would love to do it. People, you know, you're a very good example. I have a certain type of voice. So why can I not find, what doors do I need to open? 
or who do I need to find to help me to open these doors right. to get into that, you know? Well, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I kind of um, see myself as the anglicized version of Morgan Freeman. Yeah, but if yeah, I have to... I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Say it again. No, no, I was saying, I was agreeing with you. I said that I see it as well, too. Right. It's like, but if I need to do an American accent, I have a a good friend, a guy called Charlie Hopkins. He is, does Morgan's voice to a T. He is a voice artist, and, you know, he does most people's voices. He's brilliant. Now, you know, I can go and spend some time with him if the situation um, warrants and we can go through and I can come up with an American accent sounding like Mr. Freeman. But right now, th there isn't the incentive because nobody's saying, you go do that, we'll pay you this, you can come do this job, etc. So instead, I'm the anglicized version of him. And, and that's so many more opportunities to come from this, definitely. Hmm. That's kind of what I'm hoping. And doing interviews like this um, obviously helps to um, get my name out there, my face out there. Yeah. And, you know, they say um, appetite, uh, what's the, I forgot the expression, but um, exposure is good. Yep, so I'm definitely into that. So my next question for you is, what's next for Lloyd Collins? Because I see so, so, so much more in the future voiceover, because I know that's something that you really want to do, get out there. And from this interview, praise God, hopefully people see it. You never know whose eyes are watching and, and whose hands this interview could get into to see this and say, okay, I want to work with him. You know, okay. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to have to be vague now, but okay. there is this amazing project that I have been um, cast in. Um, it's based on a true story. The principal character is still alive. It was a gross. Um, uh, Uh, gross injustice that this individual was subjected to and finally um, things got sorted but it took 20 years right and I've been cast to appear and they're making a film about this very high profile and I've been cast to appear as one of the principal characters in this Filming uh, will take place in the States. It will be, it's scheduled to be like the first quarter of next year. Right. Um, I, as I said, I have to be deliberately vague. I can't mention names, NDAs, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I am so bloody excited about the prospects of this. Yeah. They've already put it out there. It's on IMDb and um it's been announced in other places um my name is included my photographs included i'm definitely in it but you know how these things work until the boss does something yeah you know. yes that's when you make the next move we got it we got it right. so we would just stay tuned we everyone make sure that you guys are following mr collins here and we we gonna get this out here we're going to get this. We're going to support it 100%. You know, I will be promoting and I will be put reposted in my stories because I'm always posting in my stories and things and such. So we can't. Oh, you, you will love it. You will, you will love it. You will love it. Right. It is very topical. Um, yeah, I think I better stop there. It's, it's very topical. And it's a true story. It's not a bit of fiction. Right. As I said, the principal character is still alive.
and it was a gross mis. Uh, oh God, what's the what's the expression? Um, uh, it was when Justice got screwed. He got screwed royally. Yeah, and you know I will be a part of telling his story, and that the good thing about that is it's been shot in the states. That will introduce me to the American market. So wearing my marketing hat, I'm thinking, hey, this film's going to be a lot of fun to shoot. To be involved in that, um, it happening in the states, it will be released and um, promoted in the states and all that kind of stuff. And so those people who thought Morgan Fre are thinking Morgan Freeman, shit, he looks younger. What's he at? You know. Hey, hello, this is me. This is Lloyd Collins, you know, the younger version of the man, you know. Um, so, again, you know, these kind of things, I, I am seriously, seriously excited about that. And as I said, I wish I could share more with you at the moment, but it is. So to answer your question in short, anything exciting happening, that is the single biggest thing at the moment. All right. There yeah. we go. There we go. And it's happening in your backyard. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I am in the USA. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What more can I tell you, you know? Um, other than that, you know, there, there's a usual. I mean, I get things like, um, um, what have I done recently? Oh, yeah, sort of odds. Ah, oh, did you check out um, my video I did with Prince, Prince EA? No, it has it dropped? Is it out now? Yeah, it was a year ago. It's had stupid amounts of views. You know Prince EA, yeah? Yes. Familiar with him. <laughs> right. Um, I got a call, I think it was maybe March of last year. Um, I'm getting old, so the memory isn't what it used to be, you know? So he did a thing, it's like four and a half minutes. It's on my website. And it's about um, a greedy businessman dies and um, meets God. And guess who's God? Yours truly. To date, it's on all the social media channels. It's on YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, yeah? It was done, I think, about March of last year. I might be a bit wrong. To date, it's had over 10 million views. Yes. Go check it out. I definitely will. I definitely will. Now, the other thing is, like, on YouTube, we're getting comments like, God isn't black. <laughs> and... Or how the hell do they get Morgan Freeman to play that role? <laughs> right? So it was absolutely awesome. So you go check it out. It's on YouTube. It's Prince EA. And it was about March. And it's, uh, as I said, or to save searching around that, if you go onto my website, it's there. You click on the link. It will take you through to the YouTube. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Also, did, did you see that rap video I did? Rap video? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, I'm multi... Um, I was about to say talented. Um, that's perhaps uh, big, bigging myself up too much. Um, I'm, a, I'm up for most things. You yeah. are literally the jack of all trades. You do it all. And that's what people love about you. And again, not only just getting, he is booked and busy. That's right. That is right. And we're so ready for this upcoming project that you have coming up as well, too. You said next year. So you guys stay tuned. Definitely stay tuned. Make sure you guys are following him. Um, tell my dolls to follow you. And go and check out your page, Mr. Collins, because they're ready to see these projects. They're ready to see the voiceover. They're ready to see so, so, so much more from you in the future. So it's coming. It's all coming. This, I, I, I'm up for it. Anything that um, you guys can do to help 
that become a reality, I'm I'm definitely cool with that. Um, you know, it's it's fun. That that's the thing. It's I'm of that kind of age now where it's not all about the money. It's yeah. about the enjoyment. It's about the satisfaction. Obviously, the money is important, right? But that is not the single motivator. It is come to me with a, um, an interesting project. You know, I look at look at it and uh, you know run with it. And it doesn't matter whether it's voiceover, modelling, commercials, still photography, bit of acting. The one thing I don't do is I don't do stage. <laughs> I've tried it a couple of times and it's not my forte. You know, when you're in a studio, you can, you can shoot the same scene 10 times until you get it right. On stage, you've got one shot. If you screw it up, you're screwed. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that, like, um, being on stage is a whole different experience than being on set. Because, like you said, if you mess it up, the audience will get you onto it. But the key trick is if you're doing stage like Broadway or a theater or whatever it is, you make sure the audience can't tell. So you got to keep going in that moment because they will pick up if you've messed up on something. Because I've right. interviewed actors who've done theater and Broadway and so much more. And there's like, well, the key trick is to keep going. So, yeah. Has no appeal whatsoever. <laughs> right? None whatsoever. <laughs> Versus being on set, it's, it's natural to you. It comes natural. You know, you go right there. If the producer needs to call you right out and do it. Yeah. But you've also got those lovely people in the production office, and they cut and they, um, they mix and they, you know, you've got a bit of graphics and all the other things. So you've got lots of help as well. You know, obviously you you you've got to have the talent to start with, but you have so much support in um, what they can do to present the end result. You know, I mean, one of my favourite ads is um, I'm trying to think. Um, Morgan Freeman, I think, <coughs> I think Danny DeVito, they were all A-listers. And it was a commercial for a drink. It was something to do with ice or something. And there was this big fire scene. I really wish I could remember. I just thought that was so bloody brilliant. And I know some of the people are actually involved in the production. And when they told me what happen behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff you know and you see this thing and every time i look at it, i think oh that is awesome i could do a bit of that or one of his other ads most i like he, do, he does an advert for um one of the airlines i think maybe emirates i'm thinking like i could sit there in an airplane and um be mr cool and you know and you know if you get the shots right then you don't see my dreadlocks you know like you can't see them now you know but that illusion and someone watching says send a hello to their friend from cafe landia and brazil hi all right fashion dolls do we have any questions any comments before we get into our games with well, mr collins here and then we conclude this is such an amazing interview i'm having such a great time the first game we're going to do while we're getting on everyone to come in is called the rapid five and mr lloyd has to tell us five things that he can't live without it can be your family your favorite football team it can be uh your favorite drink your favorite food whatever it is and then the next one we're going to do his thoughts so i'm going to go down a list of actors and you give me one word to describe each act so we're going to start off with the rapid five so what are five things that Lloyd can't live with. My coffee first thing in the morning. All right. All right. I am not alive until I have my coffee. <laughs> um, sorry, does it have to be in order of priority? Because otherwise I will get killed. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, my family. 
Um, my grandson, I absolutely adore him. Um, that's three. Um, shit. Uh, <laughs> this is not as easy a question. Um, I love traveling. I have a wonderful partner and we, we love doing stupid things, but more, mostly we love traveling and um, we love exploring and discovering new things. Um, and I suppose when you get to my kind of age, you no longer have to apologize. I, I don't mean you're rude, mm. right? But if you don't like something, you say it as it is without being rude, right? You don't have to suffer fools. You know, you don't have to listen to the BS. And, you know, you don't have a boss that you have to impress. Yes. So you have that little lot, you know, it's the freedom to be who you are. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Unapologetically. Very, yeah. very much. Without being rude. Yeah. <laughs> or offensive, or obnoxious, but just say, look, I don't agree with you, so what the hell, you know? Right. You know, you're not paying my wages, you know, and whatever, so let's agree to disagree. Absolutely. Shout out to Karma's Paradise, she's coming on the show in November, and she has her hair product line, as well as her nails. So for my ladies out there, make sure y'all please go and check out Thomas Paradise LLC. Definitely. She's coming back and we're going to talk hair trends for the fall months of November, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But talk about, really talk, 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 sorry, talk, just to interrupt, talk about nails. I love your nails. Thank you. Um, I I do my own nails, actually. Normally, nine times out of ten, I would be ordering the customized press-ons with the bling and everything. But I said, you know what? Ever since this pandemic, instead of just going to a nail salon, do them yourself right at home. They're convenient. And I've got a bunch of polishes. So I'm always experimenting with different colors and things. And the dress that I'm wearing to do, the dress that I'm wearing today is like a blue color. So I didn't plan on matching and it just happened. <laughs> it just happened. I didn't plan on matching. It just happened all together. Because next month, during the fall months, I might do a darker color. But during the summer, I like to do brighter colors. So, so your nail technician is now unemployed? Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> Not really. I mean, shout outs to Prest. Shout outs to Prest. She's watching. Um, I, I've been ordering for her for a long time like she's always made sure that my nails were on point every episode that I've done on the show you my nails are done and it's some kind of crazy design or they're extra long shout out to my co-host Johnny he specialized they care for me along with um his protege yummy yummy's right here on Instagram you guys go and check her out and late designer Terry Mugler, who's very, very big in the fashion world. I I love his fashion. So he customized, him and Yummy customized me a pair, and they were very, very, like, they were longer than these, because that's how I used to wear them when I first started. So it was beautiful. It had the pearl detailing. Like, I sent her pictures of dresses that Mugler has designed, and she went right from the pictures. She put his name on the nails. It, it was beautiful. Um, I have that picture actually saved, and I'll repost it to my stories so you guys can see. And you'll be like, wow, those are long. They were really, really long. So longer than these. But these I'm actually able to function. Like, I've gotten nails that were so long. I wasn't able to dig in my purse. I wasn't able <laughs> to type or open a door. Most girls, y'all know what we go through if, you're, if you wear long nails. So, yeah. But... I love I love changing. I love experimenting with different things. And, and it goes back to what you said, which is one of your answers for the Rapid Five. We're just doing it without apologies because you only live once. So try to experience things once. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So 
those were my five um, things. Now, you said there was uh, somebody. So I'm just. You can't live without. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think I've answered all five. All right. So we are going to get into your uh, a game I like to call His Thoughts, which will be your thoughts, because I'm going to go down the list of some actors. Will you give me one word to describe each one? So okay. the first actor is none other than you you doubled for this man, you already know who it is, Morgan Freedom. What is one word you can use to describe him? Genius. Mm. Okay. All right. Perfect. The next one would have to be none other than Denzel Washington. Oh, Oh, the man. Um, this could also be used to describe uh, Morgan. Versatile. Mm. Okay. I'm going to go back a little bit. One of the most iconic actors, and we lost him not too long ago this year. Um, Sidney Poitier. What is one word you would use? Oh, to shit. In the heat of the night, um, mm. pioneer. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Sorry, did you hear me? Yes. One word you would use to describe the next actor. This actor is another actor you lost back in 2021, 2022, Chadwick Boseman. Sorry, who? Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther. Um, of course, yes, yes, yes. Um, there's so many words I can't think. Um, it's a great loss of a wonderful talent. Um, one word, one word. Um, This doesn't begin to answer it, but he was so talented. Uh, he had, there was so much more to come. Um, so I have, to, I have to say two words, sad loss for, because it was just brilliant. And we never really got to fully appreciate I know you asked for one word. We never got to fully appreciate. So this is a positive statement, but I, it, although it might not sound it, so sad loss. We, we've lost so many actors. Not in, in 2021, 2022, this year long, we lost Olivia Newton-John. Not too uh, long recently. Ago. Yes, and it's just like it's for the next generation. Before we get to the next actor, the last actor, last and certainly not least. What advice did you give to the next generation of up and coming actors like the Michael B. Jordans of the world and the uh, the Morris Chestnut, the, the next generation who are out here that have taken a torch from the Sidney Poitiers and the Lloyd Collins and the Morgan Freemans of the world. What advice would you give to the next new and up and coming generation of actors? It's possible, it's achievable if you believe in yourself and if you need reminders, just look at some of the names you just mentioned, right? Sidney Poitier was a pioneer. Um, I mean, um, I think I've seen pretty well all his films. In the heat of the night, guess who's come home to dinner? It was just totally unheard of. Right, you know, um, the I there, there are a couple of scenes I think of uh, um, in the heat of the night when he was slapped by that uh, plantation owner. Oh, yeah, and was that the right one, or is it there was another one there? There was a, um, a biased, um police officer no I, I think i'm confusing t 
two different films here. There was one when he was a top forensic um, policeman and he found himself out. He got laid over in this um, hick town somewhere. Yeah. And there, there was a murder or something. And when they realized who he was and he helped to solve the case, there was that. And was that, was that the same film when there was a, a, um, a big um, landowner who slapped him and he slapped him back? Was that the same film? I think it was Heat in the Night. Because right. that clip went viral. Everybody was talking about how iconic that clip was. Yes. Now, bear in mind when that happened, it was just totally unheard of. So when I, when I used the word pioneer, right? And then um, guess who's coming home for dinner? You know, black man, white woman, you know, especially in the States, you know, you've got um, Mississippi burning and things like that, you know? So, yeah, that's what, what I meant when I said pioneer. And also he was a brilliant actor. Oh, they call me Mr. Tibbs. Got Mr. Tibbs, that's it, that's it, that's it, yes. Mm. God, I didn't realize I, I was that old, but now you're, you're prompting my my memory and I'm showing my age. No, not at all. And and the last actor is Lloyd Collin. So what is one word you would use to describe yourself? Um I was about to say optimist, but that's the wrong word. Um Uh, I have expectations. Um, I'm putting myself in the, if you help me out with this, right? I'm putting myself in the frame. So um, I'm open, I'm available, I'm flexible. Um, so what does that make me? One word. I would have to say innovative. And one word, innovative, because you you. You've done it all, like you said in the beginning of the interview, from the rap video, to see you rap, to see you model, to see you do all of these things, innovative. And if you're capable and you're able to do all of these things, I, I, I can think of one of my favorite singers and actresses as well, too. Everybody knows Whitney Houston is oh, one of my favorite the, mm -hmm. singers. She, she acts, she performs, she, she sings, she, I mean, she does, she did it all. So to be able to do all of that at a caliber at the, to where you're at in your career is is it is innovative. It's iconic. That's the word I would use to describe it. It's innovative. Innovative. Yeah, I, I can live with that. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm I'm happy with that one. <laughs> and yes. you said it, not me. Yes, yeah, so I, I have to give you all your flowers because you literally have done it all throughout your career and a, a lot of actors have to do that. A lot of actors have to give actors their flowers. Like I was watching um, an interview with Regina King and she was giving the actress that played alongside Will Smith, Ange it was Anjali Ellis, and she did the King Richards film with Will Smith. And they mm -hmm. literally were, you know, going back in time and talking about each other's career and their prolific film roles and things like that and such. So being able to give other actors their flowers is what it's all about here on this platform, one hundred percent. Listen, I have um, no as well. I say no aspirations, but I view this as a fun thing, and mm -hmm. I really love to be more involved. But what I'm finding is like. Um, Back in the day, they used to refer to the casting couch. Um, I like to think that that is no longer the case, or less so than it used to be. There are more and more opportunities. There are more black produce uh, actors and actresses. There are more black producers. There's funding, um, which is now um, being made available. Opportunities are increasing. Right, so for any young aspiring actors and actresses, the opportunity is certainly there now, far more so than it was 20 years ago. From my point of view, um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, 
I still have my quote unquote day job. So I'm not reliant on this. You know, if I'm not working and I, I don't have to go and get a job in a coffee bar and that kind of shit, you know. So it takes the pressure off, um, which makes it even more enjoyable. And I look at projects and I look at it with an open mind. Not, will this pay? Am I going to earn enough from this to, um, to meet the next paycheck? Uh, not paycheck, rent check, you know? So it allows me a, a great deal of flexibility and freedom. And I'm just looking for the right projects and the exposure. And I would ultimately... You know, I kind of say to myself, one of these days, Mr. Freeman is going to decide, look, you know, I have enough money. I've traveled the world several times over. You know, I have my nice big farm with my bees. I have my motor cars. I have my airplanes. Do I really need to be schnappied across the pond with the kind of frequency I'm doing? So, hey, look, let me call that fellow Collins, right? Yeah, you know, he can stand in for me. He can do a few bits. And I'll sit back. I'll still get my money. And I'll pay him a few quid, and um, everybody's happy, right? Um, the call might happen. It might not. But if he's aware, not if he knows I'm here, I'm up for that. Um, but the thing is, you can never actually get through to him because he's got agents, managers, and yeah. this series of barriers. So, you know, the message to him is, look, you know, you know I'd love to have a beer with, with him in his bar in, I've forgotten where it is now. Is it, is it Memphis he's got this bar that he's a co-owner of? And he, I'm sure it's Memphis. Maybe I've got it wrong. You know, where he chills. He owns it. He co-owns it with a, good friend of his you know i'd love to meet him there have a few beers and you know chat things over or in the meantime if you want to call me you know my number he can get hold of me no problem and we can do a deal that will help him so he won't have to maybe travel so much it'll help my career so it's the way i look at this is it's a win-win situation <laughs> might sound a bit arrogant, but it's not meant to be. Again, you never know who's watching. This, I'm going to save my interview. And I, like I said, I want you guys to tag in the comments. If you know any producers, directors, definitely. Um, oh, we've got two questions for you. Um, the first question is, what tips would you give to upcoming impersonators? And the next one, well, yeah, the next one is from, shout outs to Jay Evans again, make sure you guys Please go and subscribe to his channel. Is there any certain director that you would like to work with to do a film? Um, no, I think there are so many people out there and <clears throat> I don't think I'm sufficiently qualified and experienced or well-known to start at this point, start dictating who... I want to work with. Um, somebody comes along to me with a nice script, a sensible script. They could be famous, unknown, or somewhere in between. Um, you know, I'm not in a position, and I would not presume to start dictating. No, 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 you're shit. I don't want to work with you. Nobody knows you. That's not my thing. Yeah. So, no, I'm not a prima donna. You know, um, um, the, the other question is, what tips would you give to upcoming impersonators? I think the first thing is you've got to enjoy what you're doing. Um, you have to be prepared to work bloody hard. Um, and you need to spend a lot of time getting to know in detail all the nuances, everything you can about the person that you're impersonating. 
In my case, I'm not impersonating anybody. You know, this fella happens to look like me. Um, the difference is that he's famous and I'm poor. I'm not impersonating him. <laughs> you know, we could be the same. Uh, we could be brothers from different mothers, right? I'm not pretending to be him. We just bear this remarkable resemblance. Yeah, so, and uh, the difference is I happen to have a great deal of time and respect for him. I love his film. But I don't think there's a single film I haven't seen um, because of a genuine desire to see these things, not because I'm trying to be him. Far from it. So there's a difference between, I'm not, I do not see myself as being his impersonator. You know, he happens to look like me. <laughs> and if we can both benefit, you know, he's got a head start on me. He's got God knows how many hundreds of millions of dollars in the in the bank. Me, I'm still working on it. <laughs> it's coming again, manifestation. And Kabino says, hello, Lloyd. Great to see you. Sorry, say that again. Kabino says, hello, Lloyd. Great to see you. Sabina, hi. Um, great to see you as well. So how many people have you got watching this right now, roughly? Well, right now it's four, and then they're starting to come in. So we're waiting to see. Um, do you guys have any more questions? We're now at the end, and this was an incredible interview. So I hope you all took something from this, notice from this interview, because it can be pivotal, and it can help you if you're looking to get to doing um uh, voiceovers or doubling for someone and that is in the industry you never know because just you get just enough of you to get your feet out there in this business to help you a lot i listen um all publicity is good publicity yeah. and as i said this is great i'm sorry to enjoy the interview with a project that we have um that i should be involved in that we should start filming first quarter of next year um, with the hype, the backup, the support, the um, the nature of the project, the fact that it is based on a real life um, real life events, it's very topical, um, and I don't think I better say any more. It will attract a lot of attention, <laughs> so from my point of view on a personal um, basis it's going to help me break into the american market which after all is where mr freeman um lives so i can't see any downside to this yeah and apart from which you've been an absolute amazing host so it's been brilliant thank you so much thank you so much i've had such a great time with you and I would love to speak with you again in the future. And one more thing before we wrap up and conclude, um, shout out to Escape to History says he's been um, doubling for Michael Jackson professionally for four years or doubling for four years as Michael Jackson. And he says he's been trying to partner with an agency or a tribute band. What advice would you give to him and other actors that are watching this interview that are looking to get their feet out there in the business? Where is he based? Where is he based? Um, Escape to History. Where are you based? Type it in the comments. And where can everyone follow you and check out the project? Because you said the project will be released sometime next year. So let everyone know where they can follow you. Oh, you're in North Carolina. Okay. That's right down the road for me. Right. I have, um, I have an Instagram page, which you know. Um, I have a Facebook page which is called Morgan Freeman Lookalike on Facebook. Um, I think it's the same on Instagram. It's Lloyd Collins. Uh, my website is morganfreemandouble.com. Um, and if you forget any of that, go to Google and type in Morgan Freeman Double. Morgan Freeman look alike or Lloyd Collins and I'll come up. But 
I welcome, and I have a Twitter page, which I think is Lloyd Collins. So, you know, followers are welcome. Uh, I will be posting, I will make a conscious effort. I now have somebody who will be posting for me on a regular basis. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'd welcome the followers. You've got any questions, ask. In terms of um, the chap who was asking about the more, um, the Michael Jackson, um, I have something I can suggest. So if you want to talk to me offline later, or send, I'll, I'll send, I will send you the contact details. You can then pass it on to him. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Escape send me a message and I'll forward that information along to you. Yeah, because uh, it's worth him talking to her. And this is what she specializes in. So if we do it offline, then, you know, he can, they can make contact. And um, if something develops, fine. Yeah. So that I will gladly do. Not a problem. Sounds like a plan. Definitely. Thank you for that follow, Escape. I got you, and I will forward that information to you. Great stuff. Okay, this has been absolutely brilliant. Sorry, enjoyed it. And, I have uh, enjoyed you too. We're having a year. Great stuff. Listen, we'll catch up again soon. As soon as I have some more information, or rather, information I can share with you, I'll um, let you know. Yeah. But I think Definitely. you'll be quite you'll be you'll be quite excited when you find out what it is. All right, <laughs> I will stay <laughs> tuned. And I, and you guys make sure you're following. I will have Mr. Collins tagged in the live, and this will be uploaded to my channel. So you guys head on over to my stories, and you guys can go and subscribe to the channel. This interview will be uploaded there today. So make sure you guys head on over and subscribe. Excellent. Send me the link for that as well, and um, we'll. Or uh, one happy, one big happy family. I definitely will give you a link, and the clip will be up as well too, so that people can go back, check it out in case you missed everything. It's gonna be up, ladies and gentlemen. And without further ado, let's give thanks to our very special guest, Mr. Lloyd Collins. It was such a pleasure having you here in the dollhouse, and I would love to have you again in the future. It's been my pleasure. Many, many thanks for inviting me along. You Have a good evening. Simon. You too. Joining Just us tomorrow, up. ladies and gentlemen, we have the beautiful Simone Jones will be joining me for Girl Talk. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. Guys. Cheers. Good night. You too. Take care.